You know what all the major characters that came on GH during the MTV, what I call, age of the show, pretty well from 81 to 85, one of them is uh, so prominent in New Brunswick, a lot of people named their children either after him or his par- paramour on the show. It has to be Frisco. Now, Andrew Frisco Jones Jr., played by the multifaceted Jack Wagner, singing star, TV star, overall a great actor. Uh, he has been on the show from January 27 to 84 to September 88, from June 89 to June 91. May 94, April and May of 95, <clears throat> and again from February to April 2013. Now, Frisco is one half of the Frisco and Felicia super couple of the 80s and, of course, the 90s. Now, Wagner was nominated for the Daytime Emmy Award for Outstanding Younger Actor <clears throat> in a drama series in 1985. Now, Frisco first arrived in Port Charles in 84 when he was hired as the lead singer for Blackie and the Riff Raff. He becomes friends with fellow band member Blackie Parrish, played by the great John Stamos, and the two move in together at the Port Charles Hotel. The band breaks up when Blackie is sent to prison for manslaughter, and Frisco lands in a hospital after getting beating up for quitting the music business. When Frisco's vocal cords are temporarily damaged, he is signed a speech therapist. Tanya Roscoff, with whom he has a brief flirtation before losing interest upon the arrival of Felicia Cummings. Tanya eventually falls in love with and marries Frisco's brother, Tony Jones. Now, uh, the character, and in real life, all I need was a big hit. Probably one of the biggest, not say one-hit wonder of the 80s, but close to it. A very good power of power ballad. Now, when Felicia arrived in Port Charles in September 84, she was intent on getting back an Aztec heirloom ring that Frisco had purchased. Now, they, made, they, they set up the plot like Luke and Laura, like four years before, on the run. Now, Frisco discovers the Aztec princess under his bed, and when she breaks her leg trying to escape, he nurses her back to health and protects her from the henchmen who are also after the ring. It is during this time, with the constant bickering fueled by growing attraction, that Felicia and Frisco fall in love despite her having a fiancé, Peter Harrell, back in Texas at the time. In the quest for the Aztec treasure, Frisco, Frisco and Felicia, along with Robert and Holly, join Sean Donnelly and Luke Spencer for a Mexican adventure later congregating back in Felicia's grandmother's hacienda in Texas, where Luke's wife, Laura Spencer, Spencer, had been staying. Now, by mid-85, having survived a serious breakup, Fisco and Felicia move in together, sharing a studio apartment <clears throat> at Bobby Spencer's Brownstone. Following the arrival of kidnapping of Robin Scorpio and the murder of his best friend, Joss Clayton, Frisco goes undercover in the Asian Quarter to help Robert stop Mr. Wu's reign of terror with help from Sean Donnelly. The undercover work motivates Frisco to enroll in the police academy shortly after he and Felicia <coughs> get engaged in December 1985. So this is, uh, again, uh, some of the Luke plot, some of the Laura plot, pretty interesting. Now, by mid-85, having survived the series, uh, now, again, by, again, mid-85, goes into the police academy. He gets involved in a Brownstown murder investigation, and along with co-chief of police, Anna Devane, helped crack the Laurelton murder mystery. Long, not long after, in June 86, he graduates from the police academy and marries Felicia all on the same day, his birthday, with full regalia. Later that summer, when his wife is framed for grand theft, Frisco and Felicia go on the run, eluding several mob attempts as they travel from New York to Cincinnati to Atlantic City and later hide out to the circus before returning to Port Charles where Frisco was intent of clearing his wife's name. He's also insp- instrumental in taking down uh, the mob boss, uh, Miss, Mr. Big, who was played by a longtime GH character and has promptly promoted the detective. In June uh, 87, Frisco joins the WSB, World Service Bureau, returning for one night early that December to spend time with his wife before going into service and is later declared missing and presumed dead. However, in June 89, Frisco turns up alive just in time to see Felicia marrying the man that programmed the killer, Colton Shore. Felicia is initially reluctant to draw a choose between Frisco and Colton, but inevitably relates with her first love on Halloween 89, and a couple subsequently remarry in early 1990. Afterwards, they go to Europe on their honeymoon, and which doubles as Frisco's concert tour, which I know to Felicia is also a cover for Frisco, who had been lured back into WSB service after being warned that his loved ones were in danger. So are you keeping up? Let's let's continue. Now, 
the uh, the go on tour again, which has been lured back into WSB service. While in Paris, Felicia is kidnapped by ex DVX boss Caesar Faison, a longtime villain on a show, but is rescued by Frisco and Sean. Later, after accidentally overhearing Frisco talking about rejoining the WSB, Felicia, having just learned she's pregnant, runs away to her grandmother's house he ended in Texas. However, upon hearing that Frisco was hurt during a shooting, she returns to Port Charles. Frisco and Felicia are reunited once again, and after a premature labor scare, joyously welcomed her daughter Maxie Jones together on Halloween 1990. Do the math. Uh, Seven months pregnant. A year later, Frisco, uh, Felicia, and Maxie move back to their family's hacienda in Texas. Felicia is constantly worried about the danger that her husband faces and eventually divorces Frisco before returning to Port Charles. In 94, Maxie becomes ill with Kawasaki Syndrome, and Max Scorpio tracks Frisco down on assignment in Somalia and brings him back to Port Charles. Upon seeing her father, Maxie rapidly recovers from pneumonia and becomes well enough for a transplant. In a tragic twist, twist of fate, she eventually receives a new heart from her cousin B.J. Jones after a little girl is killed in a school bus accident. Frisco and Felicia celebrate their daughter's recovery by making love, and after Frisco leaves, Felicia discovers that she is pregnant once again. On March 7, 95, Felicia gives birth to her second daughter in a floor in Luke's club. The baby name is called uh, is, baby name is uh, Georgie Jones, uh, given by her sister Maxie. Frisco comes home in May 95 to spend time with his girls and expresses a desire to stay home and be a full-time dad. But Felicia encourages her, encourage him to go back to saving the world until he's ready to give up work for good. But in February 2013, Frisco resurfaces in Port Charles after being informed of Maxie's plans to act as a surrogate for Lulu Spencer and Dante. After a lukewarm recutter with Frisco, Mac conveys to Felicia his disappointment that she failed to mention the rekindled romance of Frisco, prompting him to wonder if she's embarrassed by her bartender boyfriend. Maxie walks into three of them and is stunned to see her father for the first time in 18 years. Frisco spends time bonding with Maxie and tries to get closer to Felicia. But at the 2013 Nurses Ball, Felicia turns down an out-of-the-blue marriage proposal from her ex-husband and her heartbroken. Frisco leaves town again, despite pleas for Maxie to stay. Now, Frisco allegedly in 2023 is the new head of the WSB agency, uh, but we still don't know. haven't seen him for a few years, so we're not sure if he's ever coming back or basically, you know, whatever goes together. Now, Frisco and Felicia, no no offense to uh, Christian Wagner, they did wear, they did marry in real life, but she was not, say, ditzy, but she wasn't like Laura. Nor Laura had a natural intelligence, but uh, Wagner, Mrs. Wagner came off as somewhat, uh, somewhat flighty. She was an okay actress, but Jack Wagner, I mean, charisma to burn, ladies and gentlemen. Um, but Jack Wagner was what he called the, uh, the poor... Uh, the poor man's uh, Paul, Paul Newman and Robert Redford. A lot of comparisons with that. I'm super, like if you ever watch When Call When Calls the Heart, right? the Canadian period show about Mounties and turn of century, twentieth century uh, people in Canada. You know, his charisma really adds up. I would figure at one point he ha- came the closest to being as popular as Luke and Laura on GH, and that's saying a lot. We've had some you know interesting couples uh, through the years, but. Jack Wagner, I mean, as a pop star, was quite good. I'm surprised he never went farther because you look at Rick Springfield, had a great career. But, uh, you know, to have two big pop stars on the show back-to-back, like Rick Springfield and Jack Wagner, and yes, they were working for ABC Disney, but, you know, uh, they got tons of airplay. A lot of people listened to their music, didn't know they were soap stars. So that's the shows. So that's my take on the great Jack Wagner, and I would figure... Uh, uh, if he ever went back to General Hospital, people's heads would explode because he really has not aged. If you see him in recent productions, he's aged well. Uh, you know, just like Casper Van Dien and you know all the the great uh, pop, uh, what do you call the uh, uh, not the the the, the sixteen magazine stars. John Stamos is not aged. Uh, Ch- you know, Rob Lowe is not aged. Uh, tremendous. I love Jack Wagner a lot because when I have family reunions, I poem. They're all named. Frisco and Felicia, and that's not a negative. So thanks for listening. If you like what we're doing here with a GH Vintage Podcast, let us know with a like, comment, subscribe, or share.